Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And today we are going to be going up to the North Cascade Mountains in Washington State, more specifically the Vesper Peak Trail. And we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Sam Sayers. And this is one of the most highly requested cases. And I also too have done a lot of research and thinking about this case because it really is just unbelievable. And it's in the northern part of Washington, and according to most people, the Vesper Peak Trail is a pretty difficult trail. It's definitely not for beginners, but Sam was an experienced hiker, and she knew this area. She had been hiking here before, so this wasn't something new to her. And on the morning of August 1st, 2018, Sam left the trailhead around 8 a.m., and she was supposed to be home roughly by 6 p.m. Now, this is Sam. She's a young woman, about 27, 28 years old. Some reports said she's 27, some say 28, so I'm not exactly sure because there's different sites saying different things. Anyway, she suffered from an autoimmune disease called alopecia, which makes most of the hair on your body fall out, but she embraced it. She shaved the rest of her head and she got a tattoo of a star. And at one point she said that, you know, she got tired of people saying that they thought she had just gotten chemotherapy and she had rather be thought of as you know a punk rocker than somebody that was fighting off cancer. She was just full of vitality, she loved life and this hike was something that she was, you know, familiar with. But it's definitely a difficult hike and towards the end the last few hundred feet are considered more of a scramble and hikers basically choose their own way up because it is so steep. However, Sam was very well prepared. She had extra food with her and it was a warm August day. And the last reported sighting of her, she was seen wearing just her hiking pants and her sports bra. However, when she failed to show up, her fiance Kevin became extremely concerned, obviously. He headed out to the trail himself. He found her car parked at the trailhead. He started searching by himself. He only had a flashlight with him, but unfortunately he tripped and that broke. So he headed out, he found the nearest payphone, he contacted the search and rescue, which was the Sno Snohomish County Search and Rescue Office, and Sergeant John Q. Adams was the first to arrive. He got there about 1.30 a.m., and they discussed what was going on, and of course, the search and rescue got started early on that next morning at roughly 6 a.m., and it launched one of the biggest search and rescue efforts in the state's history and the country's history. First, they had to start with the facts, what they did know. Sam's car was found parked at the trailhead 27 miles south of Darrington on the Mountain Loop Highway in the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. She was thought to have started this hike around 8 a.m. Her fiance Kevin said that she had lunch with some guy unidentified right around or right before she disappeared. However, this person did come in and talk with search and rescuers after he saw the news and he realized that, you know, he had had lunch with this person that disappeared. He gave them information. He said that he had last seen her. He had had lunch with her near the summit of Vesper Peak on that day at roughly 3 p.m. He also said after they had parted ways, he saw her from a distance making her way down the west side of the mountain towards Spada Lake. We also know that Sam signed the trail register and during that day there was a hiker that had passed her roughly around 4,200 feet which is it's a big climb and part of his camera image caught Sam hiking and it saw her with she had hiking poles with in both hands she had her head down and she's it was at the last part of the 4,200 foot climb and then the camera image just moves away. And that's really the last physical evidence we have of seeing her alive. So like I said, it was August 2nd of 2018 when the search really got started. And at first they started out with various volunteers that took different areas of the trail and they were obviously calling out her name and then they dispatched one of their Snowhawk 1 helicopters that was equipped with FLIR and infrared cameras. They scanned for uh, various heat signatures, but unfortunately all they found was a small tree fire. And there were fires off in the distance, you know, miles away. So it was sort of a hazy days. And they got eventually the Everett Mountain Rescue Team, which is a specialized group of volunteers. They started a quick, they started searching the Alpine area of Vesper Peak. 
And then by that weekend, they had so, se- several different SAR teams, mainly all volunteers from Kings and Skagit County, Pierce counties, had also come to join the search. They had various uh, trained rescue dog teams that tracked different types of scents. Sergeant Adams set up a base camp at Spada Lake below the Vesper southeast side. And then they had Air Force parachute parachuters personnel come in up from Oregon. The Navy came in and flew a mission. I mean, there was just such a myriad of different people involved in this search. And what they did was they had different teams searching the the different avenues. And some of these places on this mountain require uh, repelling ropes. I mean, it's not like you can just walk up. I mean, there is obviously the main trail, but they had people going at this from every different angle you can imagine. And as more and more media outlets got wind of this, it spread like wildfire, so to speak, which can be good, but also bad. Sometimes it attracts, you know, the wrong type of people. But for the most part, it was it was good. You know, they had local drone pilots that were doing flights on their own time and passing along the footage to the authorities. There was a $20,000 reward that was announced, which, of course, then it brought in more people and there was more volunteers uh, than they had ever seen before and according to sergeant adams he got hundreds of phone calls including one from the general who was in charge of the washington national guard who offered his own helicopters to help which he said that never happened before tips were pouring in from all over the place he said that her missing flyers were seen hundreds of miles away they had people from various ymca and psychics and i mean just everything you could possibly imagine which is good but it's also tougher sometimes because the authorities have to go through each and every lead and a lot of times some of the leads are just nonsense but they don't know that they have to go through each and every one of them Sergeant Adams ended up setting up a second base camp at the Big Four Ice Caves. And just to give you an idea of how involved some of these teams were, there was a dog, Raven, the dog search, and his handler spent 39 days on the mountain. 17 of those were in a row, which I just found incredible. More than 80 volunteers were on foot, over 14 separate dog teams, and helped with the search several different helicopters and drone teams and private drone teams helped search the vesper area and they still nothing was found at one point they had uh, a sheriff's marine unit got involved in addition to all the volunteer searches from around the state they had put in thousands of hours of time into this search and they left various bags of food and supplies with notes on it saying things like stay strong we're looking for you people are thinking about you they left you know something a bag with a poncho socks different things so that if she was out there and lost and she came across them she would have supplies and something to keep her going and you know that that support knowing that people are looking for you can be instrumental and you know having your positivity and being able to get out the sheriff's office spoke to many witnesses because despite this being a weekday it was a very the day that she went missing that august 1st it was a very sunny day so the trail was actually pretty crowded and there had been various people that had seen her before she went missing but Unfortunately, after that last last sighting at 3 p.m. on August 1st of 2018, there was no other sighting of Sam Sayers. The official search lasted 22 days. Over 400 hours of air operations alone took place from the sheriff's office and various other agencies that volunteered. Over 115 hours of drone operations took place in the area. 85 hours of the marine unit and support teams that were in Spada Lake, over 330 hours from the local search and rescue offices, and thousands of hours from volunteers took part in this search. And they still, from all that effort, nothing was found. They didn't even find any of her gear that she may have to, because the last thing she was seen wearing was just her sports bra and hiking pants so they assumed that they would find something but they found nothing so unfortunately after those 22 days the official search was called off and according to sergeant 
John Adams, who was basically in charge of the search, said, we have, quote, exhausted all leads and tips. We have interviewed all witnesses that would have come forward. We have checked and double checked every possible route that we believe Sam could have taken. And we just have found nothing. Quote, if there was a place we thought she could go, we had people look for her in that place. We just have exhausted every possible effort. He said, unfortunately, it was getting to the point where their own volunteers and personnel were being put at risk due to the rugged and very remote and dangerous terrain. And they took as many risks as they could without risking their own people. But they eventually they had to call off the search. Now, of course, the family members continued the search with private helicopters professional dog teams, professional trackers. They set up a GoFundMe page. They raised over $40,000. And her fiance, Kevin, was just amazing throughout this whole thing. I mean, he put in over 100 hours on the mountain. He kept the search going for as long as he could. I mean, he lost a ton of weight. He was out there day and night trying to get more people involved. I mean, when I read about how much devotion he had to this, it just... It broke my heart because, you know, every day he was out there looking for anything, any kind of hope, you know, and he even was quoted as saying at one point he ran into somebody that didn't know that it was Kevin. And he said to him, he's like, yeah, I think it was the fiance that did it, blah, blah, blah. And Kevin just laughed it off because he said he just didn't care. At least he knew that there were people out there looking and he was just so dedicated to this search. And He just hopes and prays that one day he will get the answers for, you know, what happened to his beloved Sam. And there are still flyers out there to this day. Every now and then you'll come up upon, you know, a tree or a telephone pole that'll have her flyer, a missing flyer on it. Uh, There's flyers still out there saying alerting hunters and hikers of what to look for. And hopefully one day they w- their family will get some answers. I know her family, her mother and dad, they're doing their own search and they're still trying to find answers. This is an actual map of the areas that were searched that Kevin uh, kept and he did an amazing job of keeping track of all the efforts. And for those of you that are curious, there were several different cell pings, as you can see on that map, and they did follow up and search those areas, but they found nothing, and they never found her cell phone either, which is very bizarre because after the last ping, it was like it just vanished or it was turned off. Of course, it is also possible that it was damaged in a fall or it you know, got submerged in water. It's just impossible to say for sure. And at one point, uh, one of the drone people reported saying that he saw two unidentified strange males at the time or roughly at the time of her disappearance. So, of course, a lot of people ran with that theory saying that there was foul play involved. You know, it's impossible to say. I personally don't think that it was foul play, but I don't know. Anything is possible. It's probably more probable that there was a a fall of some kind. According to many people that hike that area, it just takes one little slip because it's so rugged and steep, especially at the top. But again, Sam was an accomplished hiker and she was very experienced. So the fact that they didn't find any of her gear or anything with all that searching it's it's really impossible to say and my thoughts and prayers go out to kevin all of her family and friends and everybody who knew and loves her and i'd like to dedicate this video to sam sayers her family her friends kevin all the search and rescue all the volunteers everyone who put so much effort into finding her and i just hope and pray that one day soon we'll find some answers and get some closure that you so desperately deserve and need And I just hope and pray that Sam can be brought home to you one day soon, one way or another. I want to thank you all for watching, as always. And please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Remember, this is an ongoing investigation. We still don't know what happened to Sam, and people are still looking and trying to find her. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. And I will see you all the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I hope everyone's doing well. And I am trying to get through the cases that have been requested one at a time in order as they are requested, as well as doing the cases that I'm 
wanting to do too. So please be patient with me. I will get to them all. And obviously if a case comes up that's current, I will work on that immediately. And I appreciate all your comments and thank you all so much for all your support. And I'm still looking for ideas for the next giveaway when we hit 65,000 subscribers. So definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are and I will see you in the next one.